What comes to mind when you think about Sri Lanka? Here's what I see. But this is just a facade, a lie we have all been told for years. So while you relax under a palm tree on the beach, sipping your ice-cold banana smoothie, here is the real Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka now and the devastating economic crisis there. The country's economy has collapsed, it's run out of food and fuel and medicine and other essentials. Sri Lanka defaults on $51 billion external debt. Now the big problem with Sri Lanka is that the government at this point of time is entirely controlled by one family. This is the story of how one family hijacked a whole country, eradicated it with war, corruption and severe poverty while living a lavish life of luxury in huge mansions with fleas of exotic cars and servants who attended to their every need. This is the real story of Sri Lanka. Our story starts on July 23rd, 1983 the day that everything changed on the small, beautiful island neighboring India. That day was the beginning of one of the bloodiest civil wars the world had ever seen, one that would last for more than three decades. Locals will later refer to that month as Black July. You see, Sri Lanka is mostly populated by two main ethnic groups. 74.9% are Sinhalese and 11.2% are Tamils. In spite of the fact that both are Sri Lankans, Sinhalese generally follow Buddhism, while Tamils tend to follow Hinduism. So, we have two groups of people speaking different languages and following different religions in one place. What could possibly go wrong? So, back to our war. As I mentioned earlier, the war lasted for three decades and it was horrible, bloody, terrifying, traumatic and miserable as wars are. No one was safe, no one could escape it. But in 2009, after 26 years of non-stop fighting, it finally came to an end. In the aftermath, there was only one obvious winner, Mahinda Rajapaksa, the Sinhalese leader. Mahinda was elected for the first time just a few years ago and very quickly he managed to do what so many before him couldn't. Stop the killing and start building Sri Lanka from its ruins. Since he was a Buddhist from birth, you might expect Mahinda to be enlightened, calm, peaceful and wise. But unfortunately, the similarities between him and Gandhi were non-existent. But nonetheless, when the Tamil Tiger rebels were crushed in 2009, he was celebrated by the majority Sinhalese as a hero for bringing an end to the worst war in their history. When a majority crushes a minority, it's not the utopian ending we all wish for, but at least the worst phase of Sri Lanka's history has come to an end, right? The answer is, surprisingly, yes, and then no. So who is this young hero who managed to do something that so many before him couldn't? Sri Lanka's president, Mahinda Rajapaksa, was born a poor man who built himself from nothing and became one of the best presidents the country has ever known. Kidding. He was actually born to one of the richest families in Sri Lanka and was basically a legacy in the country's politics. Thus, in 2005, when he became the president for the first time, it was hardly a surprise he decided to make the country a family affair. The first to get a job was his brother, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, who was now the country's defense secretary leading the military forces. While Chamal and Basil, his other brothers, were assigned to be responsible for the economic development of Sri Lanka, and they weren't alone, other relatives were not forgotten. Yes, they had some critics, but if we're being honest, it seemed like this strange arrangement was actually working. The family business was booming. The average income of Sri Lanka was double that of the neighbors. With a flourishing textile industry, manufacturing for top brands, largest tea productions in the world and one of the leading tourism industries on the planet, they were thriving. Wait, you're probably wondering, what about the scary clips that we showed you in the beginning? 
The country is now facing 55% inflation, a $50 billion debt, and an unbelievable shortage of medication, fuel, and food. Even school exams were cancelled due to a short supply of paper all over the country. How did Sri Lanka's economy get to this point? If you remember, Mahinda Rajapaksa was elected to office in 2005, and as soon as he became president, he began to place the entire Rajapaksa clan in government positions. Now, typically, hiring family members means you're not hiring the most competent people, but rather the most loyal. And just as to be expected, a combination of increasing dictatorial tendencies and corruption led to their fall from power in 2015. But in 2019, Kotabaya Rajapaksa, the military brother, was elected to the presidency, bringing back the now almost royal family right back to where they belong, on top. This might sound like a joke, but trust us, it's not. To get back into power, Kotabaya went on TV and simply promised huge tax cuts to all the people in Sri Lanka. And with that, started the beginning of the end. Even though the government lost 25% of its revenue, the Rajapaksas were back in power. But that was not all. Gotabaya had another great idea. Eco-farming. The results were brutal and swift. In spite of the president's bold declarations that organic farming could produce comparable crops to traditional farming, domestic rice production fell by 20%. Sri Lankans, who were always self-sufficient in rice production, were now starving for the first time in their history. This forced them to import $450 million worth of rice, which pushed the already shaky economy into an even deeper hole. In 2020, COVID travel restriction hit Sri Lanka's hospitality industry, and in 2022, the war in Ukraine cut off Russian and Ukraine visitors. And with those being the two most common tourists to Sri Lanka, the country was now bleeding money. Everything escalated quickly. In February, the official inflation numbers rose to 17.5%, and by June, they were already at 55%. But the president had a dirty secret, and he'll do anything in his power to keep it. Inflation wasn't 55% as he claimed. The real number was just a bit higher. It was over 130%. Now, just to give you some perspective, right now the inflation rate in the United States is 9.1%. And if you watch YouTube or read the mainstream media, you'll see the word recession a lot. I mean, a lot. Furthermore, the biggest investors and analysts are calling it a doomsday scenario. If this is what 9.1% inflation feels like, Imagine a 130% inflation. So let's get back to President Rajapaksa. He was spending much more than the country was making. Importing goods instead of exporting and paying cash they did not have. Depleting the country's money reserves to the point of no return. Adding insult to injury, oil prices were skyrocketing all over the world and importing oil to Sri Lanka by sea had become a nightmare. On June 29, 2022, the government announced that it only had fuel for one more day. Without food, oil, and a currency that holds no value, the Sri Lankans were now starving. You would imagine that it can't get any worse, but it did. The country is now so shot on funds that it has decided to stop printing money and paying employee salaries. You can probably guess how the story ends. To save the people, and honestly himself, the president has no choice but to go and ask to borrow money from any country that might agree. Now, it's not a new thing for countries to borrow money. Just ask President Biden, who owes the Chinese red dragon Xi Jinping $980.8 billion. But at this point, Sri Lanka couldn't even return the interest on the existing debt they had, not to mention the owed amount itself. Therefore, when Rajapaksa knocked on doors to ask for more money so he could save his country, the only thing he heard were closing doors and crickets. Oh, and the noise of a furious mob coming for him with fire, knives and guns. In the beginning, the Rajapaksa tried to hold the people back with military force, but it all fell apart when several Sri Lankan military personnel stopped and joined the protesters. Former President Mahinder Rajapaksa was evacuated, 
from his official residence after protesters stormed it. All over Sri Lanka, the Rajapaksa family houses were attacked. The president fled in the middle of the night on a military jet to the Maldives and was reported to be staying at the Waldorf Astoria. Staff at the hotel have confirmed that Gotabaya and his family are staying at the luxury hotel, where a one-night stay typically costs between $5,903 and $8,760. On June 10th, hundreds of thousands of protesters broke into President Gotabaya's official residence. While they took over his mansion, swimming in the pool, playing his piano and cooking in his kitchen, they have also managed to find 17 million Lankan rupees stashed all over the property. In the current situation, Sri Lanka only has one option left – fight for its existence. But where are the Rajapaksas? Following some well-needed R&R on a private island, President Gotabaya flew to Singapore for a private visit. The Singaporeans have kindly asked him to leave by August 11th, 2022, and he's expected to return to Sri Lanka to face the music. But what about Gotabaya's brother, the first Rajapaksa president, the OG strongman of Sri Lanka? Surprisingly, Mahinda Rajapaksa didn't run. Sources say that there is a huge rift between the two brothers, and the original GOAT Rajapaksa is planning his comeback to power and grooming his son Namal to take over. Although almost everyone has an opinion on the Rajapaksas, there is no doubt that they have achieved something that no one else has. They saved the country from a bloody three-decade war, transformed it into a liberal paradise and the strongest economy in Southeast Asia, and then completely destroyed it in less than 20 years.